On Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, February 25th, 26th, and 27th, the Mahoning Valley Human Trafficking Task Force under the command of the Mahoning County Sheriff's Office conducted an operation called Operation Pedo Cure. The goal of this operation was to investigate sexual predator activity on the internet. The outcome of this investigation resulted in 10 arrests of individuals attempting to solicit minor boys and girls for sexual activity. The Mahoning County Sheriff's Office would like to personally thank the Mahoning County Prosecutor's Office, the Austin Town Police Department, the BCI and their ICAC unit, the State Highway Patrol, the Ohio Investigative Unit, the Adult Parole Authority, the Warren City Police Department, the Cuyahoga County Prosecutor's Office ICAC Task Force. This operation was viewed by all agencies as a great success, not only by the amount of individuals arrested, but the sacrifices by all agencies involved in providing the manpower for this very complicated operation. Um, this was something that just took an incredible amount of time uh, and effort by all of these agencies. Uh, you know, special thanks obviously goes to BCI and to Cuyahoga, their task force. Um, they actually have an individual task force with Cuyahoga County's prosecutor's office that uh, they specialize in this type of thing. Um, the biggest thing to me with this was it was a huge eye opening, uh, especially if you have kids. Uh, the amount of chatter, uh, you know, we arrested 10 and that's a huge success, you know, thought by all the agencies involved. Uh, but the scary part of this was the actual amount of chatter that our investigators saw online and were unable to close the deals on. Um, you know, and if I could give any advice out there, if your parents, uh, check what your kids are doing on the internet, check what they're doing on their iPhones. Uh, you're the parent, it's, it's your responsibility. Um, you know, they could be getting into something that they don't, you know, they don't really know the full uh, danger of what they're doing. Um, this operation, I, I can tell you, especially with, which what we all learned here, uh, we're not going away. If you're a predator out there and you're talking to somebody on the internet, you think you're talking to somebody that's 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, uh, please know that you might be talking to an officer. Um, I'll open this up to questions or if uh, Jim Ciotti with the BCI would like to talk. Um, in, in 2011, Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine created the Crimes Against Children Unit to combat these exact types of criminal offenses and, and target these particular offenders. Ohio Attorney General's office had a dual role in this operation. Um, the task force is sanctioned by the Ohio Organized Crime Investigation Commission and BCI provided agents uh, to assist in this and we are dedicated to the task force. There are two things that impressed me over the past three days. First, the numerous agencies that came together and worked uh, professionally and tirelessly, and more importantly, functioned as if they've been working together for years. Um, the criminal history of these offenders I found uh, just outlandish. If it, uh, their uh, proximity to this area. Oftentimes in the, these areas, we expect these tra people to travel hundreds of miles to meet with children. Um, in this particular instance, the subjects were very local uh, and were within quick driving distances. I think this investigation proves the value of working collaboratively and the success of agencies in supporting these types of efforts. Is this, uh, you, I guess I should say, what, did you want to add something? No, that's I do not, sure. I'm um, tell me about the history. You said that stunned you a little bit. What was it about? what they were doing and their history. Their, their, their criminal history. I mean, we had several of these guys have prior convictions and are listed on the uh, sexual registry list. Can I speak on one? Uh, the, second one on, the second one on your sheet, guys, Michael Bowman. Uh, of course, he came from Canton, Ohio. He is currently a registered sex offender. Um, his previous charges that brought him to that status was, was disseminating matter harmful to juveniles and child pornography. And then he was again arrested in this soliciting a 15 year old boy. So, like Agency Audi said, it's very surprising a lot of times to see what you see. How do they, uh, whoever wants to, Jim or whoever, how do they do this? I mean, if they're on these lists and everybody has access to these, uh, these predator lists, 
how do they continue to, to get away with this? These guys gain access through their thing. Hang on one second, I'm sorry. You know, these guys gain access just via technology, social media, that, uh, and, uh, you know, a phone, you know, is, is capable of putting these people in contact with, with children. <clears throat> That the technology has yeah. gone so far so fast. Yeah, different different social applications, different types of uh, uh, websites, and you know they don't know who they're talk necessarily talking with. And then it's hard for law enforcement to track them. Um, Is this I, I think I think one of the things that we can say, and we don't want to say any of the actual websites or you know like dating websites or websites that you would sell things on or. Uh, but it was, there was at least, I'm going to say, what, five or six that uh, they were using that the posts went up on to attract uh, uh, without giving anything up. There's certain things that can be said during an investigation that will tip one of them off uh, that this is a potential uh, for a young individual posting. How do they convince young people to meet them in these places? What do they say to entice these Teenagers, or maybe even younger people, to meet them. Well, you don't want to take take. I don't them. want to take them. You want to tell him, Jeff? Yeah, Jeff. Jeff you there's, there's, on that. there's nothing specific. I mean, they go on and they build trust. Is what they end up doing. And like the sheriff said beforehand, I'm not going to give you the websites, but it's not just websites. It's it's children's social media. Uh, our kids have cell phones these days and are are signing up on so social media. They, they create false accounts, sometimes they create true accounts, and they befriend somebody on social media. It's not what they say, it's the trust they build up. These conversations aren't just one day most of the time. They're lengthy, and they build trust. And then the next thing you know, they, 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 they build that trust to the point where this, the juvenile will meet with them. So um, it's not really what they say, it's the length of time to build so trust. They're putting a lot of effort into this. Correct, going absolutely. For the long, absolutely. Going for the long haul then. Absolutely. And then as you investigate, the investigations are lengthy because you have to engage these people. Correct. These investigations are, these investigations are, take a lot of time. They're manpower intensive. They uh, require uh, a, a strong dedication. Plus it, it requires some very specific specialized training on the parts of the agents and officers functioning in these chat capacities. It's not something, you know, any of us could sit down and do. You have to, you have to know what to say, you have to know where to say it, you have to know what legal limits you're allowed to say to as well. And, and that's why it was so beneficial for us to have a uh, couple Mahoney County prosecutors were there the entire time making sure we were doing, you know, what we were supposed to do, uh, you know, when it came to wording, uh, when we had enough in a conversation uh, that, that so brought it to a criminal charge, um, and, and you know, just uh, for lack of a better term, it was just terrible. It'd make you sick. Uh, just the, the mm -hmm. amount of individuals out there trolling or fishing for uh, young kids on the net. Uh, I mean, you, it really is an eye opening, uh, eye opener. I know I said that before. Uh, and that's why units or specialized units such as BCI's uh, ICAC unit in Cuyahoga County Prosecutor's Office ICAC unit, they're specialized in this. They, they know how to, uh, you know, make the posts. They know how to, uh, like, detect, or uh, Major Allen said, uh, to gain the trust of the individuals and, uh, and, and how to basically bring them in. Um, I think on, if you can find any humorous note to this, if, if there is anything, uh, one of the individuals was unable to get a ride, but he still wanted to engage uh, with this youngster and um, we, created a, fake we created a fake Uber account and sent one of our agents uh, based on the address that the individual gave uh, to their residents, picked them up and uh, gave them a ride. So. Uh, we yeah we found that to be a little bit funny but uh, it was also very successful so is it safe to assume that these people probably have multiple people that they're trying to to lure uh, since they're investing all this time to build a relationship go ahead I can't, I can't comment on that I can only comment that they're that they were talking with us uh, there were several that were 
talking to several of our chatters at the same time. So uh, it, it, it's probably a, uh, likely that they are, but I can't speak on it because we're not following their move on the internet. But the, several of these guys were actually engaged with two or three of our chatters at the same time trying to determine which child they were going to meet. So it's safe to say probably, but I can't speak for sure. Can you speak on any additional arrests past uh, what well, we did in general? Like the sheriff said, there was so much conversation beyond the 10 people that we arrested. Um, that conversation does merit criminal charges. Once this is all done and our detectives have everything and the prosecutors have them charged and, and we move on, uh, our, our, our agents and detectives and, and prosecutors are going to review those cases where the subjects were not able to come and uh, p possibly for criminal charges here in the near future. So if you were talking in the last three days inappropriately, there's a good chance you might be seeing us. So. I think it's on here, the one guy was also charged with corrupting another with drugs. Yes, um, that individual uh, was talking to the purported minor uh, wanting her to try marijuana um, and brought marijuana for them to smoke together. So that was the corrupting another with drugs. Attempted corrupting mm -hmm. another with drugs. Did all of these come into Mahoney County? You didn't have to go. You may have. No, they all came here. And like I said, the people you guys see coming from other areas, you see only a few, but Sharon, Pennsylvania, Canton, and uh, I believe it's it's relatively quick driving distance. Yeah, they're all people aren't traveling yeah. from New York, and we're not advertising out there. They're they're looking here. I don't know if it feels safer coming to engage with somebody illegally in another area. I don't know how they feel. I can't speak on that, but it's not like I was advertising in Akron for them to come here. They found us. Was there a reason why Canfield Court last night? Were they all picked up in that jurisdiction? Yeah, we wanted to stay. We wanted to stay in one jurisdiction. It makes it a lot easier for detectives instead of driving around filing charges everywhere. So we tried to stem it in one jurisdiction, and Canfield Court was that jurisdiction. Where they would come into that area. Correct. And you pick them up. Correct. There was a joke going around the Uber driver. We wanted to just drive them right into the Sally Port. In the jail. jail. Into the just <laughs> drive them straight to the jail. We were actually going to do that, and uh, and then we determined that we wanted everybody to be managed in the same court, same prosecutor, so it's a lot easier. So we decided to drive them to the location. But yeah, we were thinking about driving them right into jail. So any idea off the top of your head, look, many of these have this have similar charges. But they're also some of them are F fours and F fives. Is it possible some of these can get away with probation or is it because it involves children that there is enhancement to meet prison time? To get a definite answer to that, you'd have to speak with Jennifer McLaughlin. I had, she was there the whole time. She was awesome um, and, and reviewed it. But there are some of these charges that are mandatory for uh, prison or jail. I do remember her saying to me, I don't know what the aspects are to do that. But um, a lot of the ones that differ in the felony degree uh, have to do with age differences between uh, the, su the suspect and the juvenile. So. Uh, those are the different those are what are different with the felony charges but as for prisonable things you'd have to speak with uh, prosecutor McLaughlin. would you say this is the biggest since you've probably been involved with some of these crimes this is this one of the if not the biggest sting of its kind in northeast ohio that you remember i can't speak specifically because ohio, uh, the cuyahoga county prosecutor's office they've they operate these as well. So I don't know what kind of numbers that they have gotten. I could but say something on that one. This is the biggest we've been involved in in Northeastern Ohio. When the operation was over, of course, we debriefed and, and I spoke with the uh, ICAC unit from the Cuyahoga County Prosecutor's Office and they said that this was very successful and their uh, years of doing this, this was one of the highest uh, arrest rates that they, or, or well, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, one of the highest were the, the amount of individuals with 10 arrested in one sting operation. These, they don't, they don't always show. I mean, you build charges on them, but they don't always show. It's, sometimes it's scary. So they were, they said that this was very successful to them who do this full time. So I, I believe it was, uh, I believe it was a good one. Yeah, every, everybody was very yeah. proud and very excited on, you know, that, 
this wasn't one of those where you know you, you end up arresting a lot of Johns looking for prostitutes. Some the, the, these are looking for uh, these individuals are looking for children. You know, twelve year olds, thirteen year olds, fourteen year olds, and it's so. Uh, I think everybody just has a really good positive feeling of accomplishment. Uh, you know, from an operation like this, because when you start it, the first thing you know is that, that you're putting in a lot of manpower, and that obviously costs money too. So you're putting in a lot of manpower, and you don't know if you're going to get one, you don't know if you're going to get none, you don't know if you're going to get ten, you know. And it uh, it ended up being, from what I understand, uh, one of the highest, uh, at least with the unit that we were dealing with out of Cleveland, it was one of the most successful ones they've ever done. So we're proud of that. Uh, just a lot of agencies, a lot of collaboration involved. You would have a lot of chatter beforehand that this was going on? Correct. You start early. Yeah, these these communications. This this just just doesn't start get up and running. Uh, the day of, you know, the day of, you know, for three days. It's uh, uh, you know months of this, you know, and, and you're gaining trust and you're you know with the individual and you know. So 